All right, so um, almost got the shop cleaned out here. And uh, what's really cool about this farm is it came with a super old radio. Every shop needs an old radio. An old realistic speaker and JVC thing, and it doesn't take anything else really other than all analog signals. Um, pretty stoked about today though, because my buddy Adam's coming out from the city, and um, one of the things that we ended up inheriting with this farm is a whole bunch of lawn to cut, which is kind of ironic given that I'm a permaculture guy. Um, and so we've got this one lawnmower that uh, is what we use for all of our trails. We've got like 15 kilometers of trails in the back woods there, which sounds really exorbitant um, and kind of luxurious to have trails and have enough fossil fuels to be able to mow them. But I have secret plans for those trails um, and I'm going to keep them open because our property is perfectly set up for sheep and goats. And so my buddy Andrew Bennett, who grazes in Rossland, BC, uh, on the ski hills and stuff, has a, a whole process on how he goes around and grazes other people's land. And I'm going to use his concepts here on this property. And so the paths basically give me access to the forest um, so that I'll be able to move my goats or sheep in and then fence into the forest from the actual path. So we'll get into that in a future video. But in the meantime, um, because those paths are kind of rough, we end up with these blades for our lawnmower that end up getting pretty chewed up because they're cutting roots and rocks and um, because I don't like waste uh, I was talking to Adam on the phone the other day and I said you know what what can we do with this old blade and he's like oh maybe we can make a machete or a bill hook or something so anyways he's going to bring his um, forge today we're gonna set it up here in the garage and we're gonna hammer some steel and see what we can make out of these old lawnmower blades. And I've got two of them and I'm sure I'll have plenty more to go. So uh, let's uh, get set up here and we'll wait for Adam to come. Yeah, people aren't gonna like your video with that hat on. I wouldn't care about it too much. Uh, anyways, hey Adam. How's it going? Good, what are we gonna do today? We're gonna bang some hot steel. I brought uh, Coal Forge, believe it or not, from the city. And another anvil, my Princess Auto anvil, so it's high tech here. And we're going to move all this stuff in the garage and uh, get set up. Awesome. Okay, let's do it. This is where I store my... is it on? Yep. And my coal in one of these concrete mixers. Yeah. It's a good size, and this stuff I get from Lacombe. Huh. It's like a historical society, it sells it by the bank. Right. We might have to turn this stuff into a religion in order to be able to <laughs> continue to get it. Exactly. <laughs> pile of papers. The religion of locksmithing. <laughs> so is this, uh, is this a factory brick? Yeah, these are the kind of bricks that go inside a, a wood stove. Okay. And they are handy for setting up around the coal forge if you want to protect the wind or whatever. Yeah. And I have a chunk of stove pipe that'll set up sometimes for like a super draft. Okay. And, uh, but out here I think we should do it open so we can access it from all sides. All right, sounds good. All right. So are we gonna have some fun with this too? <laughs> yeah. So what's what's with the spring? Like why spring steel? Spring steel is like a medium carbon. Yeah. And it's really good for anything requiring, you know, that, that you don't want to bend. Yeah. Or that if it does bend, it kind of comes back to its shape. Okay. So that's like a one ton <laughs> spring. And uh, I just got it from a neighbor, so. I'm excited about that. It's way harder than regular steel, the mild steel for working, but um, it makes good stuff. Tell me about carbon. Like, why is that important? So, you can get from like zero to about 1% or maybe 2% carbon in steel. And low carbon steel is like mild steel. You can weld it easily, you can make stuff out of it, but when you bend it, it stays bent. And it's just sort of soft. Mild That's steel. low mild steel, low yeah. carbon. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
railway nails and stuff like that are made of the same stuff ish <clears throat> you get into medium carbon steels like uh, 5160 and 4140 and that kind of thing they can be hardened so you can actually make a decent edge out of them they're really good for making tools out of punches um, hot cuts you know just general stuff and they're good for making tongs um, and then high carbon steels can harden really hard and make a like a cutting edge that'll last a long time. But but uh, simple carbon steels that are one percent or just over one percent are, are perfect for blades. And they're a little more brittle though, isn't it? Yeah, you have to temper them back and stuff. You still have to temper this too. But um, yeah, cool. should be able to work it. Okay. Thanks. Do you have some of your knives with you right now? Uh, yeah. Show some of the stuff that you've done. Sure. I brought all my ash and everything <laughs> in this forge. You're such an ash hole. Yeah. <laughs> this, so, let me just show some stuff about the coal. So this is maybe a little bit partially burned. It's black, it's got some shiny faces on it. It's, it's sort of like a little pebble. You can kind of crush it apart. When it starts to burn, it makes, it, uh, all the volatiles come out and stuff, you end up making coke. And it's interesting, it's really light, like fillet. It's like popcorn. Huh. Um, but before it burns out completely, the co coke is the best stuff. It burns nice and clean. Hmm. And uh, sometimes even the small pebbles like will clump together and make a big chunk like that. And you have to break it apart with a chunk or whatever. Hmm. The thing. But um, just to show some of what I've made here. So actually this is an interesting set. This is... Uh, just bring it up a bit closer there. Nice. That. Yeah, that's great. This one was made by my six-year-old. <laughs> we took a chunk of steel we found in the ocean in Victoria, brought it home and just sort of shaped it. It's sort of mild steel and not really going to be a knife knife, but fun. Get the little guys in. Uh, my nine-year-old made this one. And this is W1, I think. Um, so it's a water-hardening shallow hardening uh, water quench steel. Anyway, um, yeah, we had a fun time just shaping it up and stuff. If you look, there's some little cracks and things. It's not sort of perfect, but uh, great fun to make these sorts of things with kids. I just love it. And this is one I made. Can't remember what this is. I think it's actually a three layer one. Damascus. And I burned it a bit. Uh, yeah, they call it Sanmai when it's three layers like that. Okay. I guess that's the Japanese word for three layers. Hmm. And then uh, I left the tempering colors on it. It went a little bit uh, extra long. I just left it in the toaster like overnight. Well, put it on for two hours, but I left it in there overnight and it came out with these wicked purples and blues and stuff, which is a little bit over tempered, but I think it might be just because it was in there for a long time. Didn't actually overcook. Cool. That's awesome. Okay, and then we got an anvil down here. So let's take a peek at that. And in here. Okay, another big one. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be using to bang steel. This is a perfect little anvil for kids. This is, I think, a 75 pounder. And I got it from uh, a veterinarian who just sort of had an extra one hanging around. And it's small and easy to move and stuff like that. It's great for things like this. I can throw it in the truck and it's not going to break my back. Um, and, I, and it's not attached to anything, so I can just sort of move it around. But awesome. just use anything to get started. Princess Auto Special. That one's from Princess Auto? Yeah. Oh, wow. You should be on their um, commission there. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd use it. <laughs> this is about 110 pounds. It's not the best animal in the world, but again, you can move it. And I kind of like the shape. I like to have round horns so you can um, do stuff, especially expand circles and stuff like that. Um, and. So the castings are never great on these things when you first get them. So I like to just take a grinder and sort of clean up the face of it. Uh, this hasn't even, I might do this today too actually, is, is put a little round over on these edges here. And leave them sharp elsewhere, but like just you get about a th half inch radius here and then like a three eighths radius and a quarter inch and sort of leave it sharp. So you can do different uh, edges. Um, make different shapes. Um, but yeah, the uh, Princess Auto stuff is crap as it is and as cheap as it is. I think I got this for a couple hundred bucks and um, I don't know, it's great for stuff like this. I've got a better anvil at home. 
Um, but I actually use this one a lot and the kids like it. It's got a nice big face. It's imperfect and all that stuff, but I don't really care. So these are the main things we're going to use today. That's got the forge, a couple of anvils. We'll move some stuff around here and uh, start the fire and get cracking. Okay, so we're just going to run a grinder against this and see if we can tell what kind of carbon it is but based on the sparks. I'm not sure it's going to change anything we do actually, but <laughs> we'll give it a go over here. The uh, sparks were long and uh, exploded at the ends, so it's at least medium carbon, and that's what you'd expect from something like this. Probably fairly high, high carbon. So what, what are the signs that, for other types of carbon? Mild steel will generally have kind of straight sparks and won't really explode. They'll just be sort of like yellow lines. But when you see uh, the sparks come off on this, they will come down, they'll be brighter maybe and then they split and kind of explode and become sort of a cascade of fireworks. And that's how you can tell the difference. And so we don't have any oil here today, so we're probably gonna to try to water quench this anyway, so we'll just see what happens. Uh, maybe we'll partial quench. We'll see if it all cracks and stuff. Um, if we end up cutting off a chunk, we could uh, try heat treating it, getting it brittle, and then just seeing how like, we'll break it on purpose and see what it looks like inside. And that'll show us sort of grain size and exactly kind of how brittle it feels. Um, but I think we should just get cracking. Let's start cutting this thing up and go for it. Okay, so this is very specific. You stick it in here and you cut it. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how long we're going to make this thing. But obviously we kind of have that hole in the middle unless we wanted to build it into the thing so far somewhere. So. Oh, let's build it into the design. <laughs> Be the, the beginning of the shaft so we know it came from a lawnmower. Okay, well, we'll, be, we'll make two halves. How about that? And we'll... Okay, so this just came out of my garage the way it was. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if it's full of uh, ash at the bottom, but when, when you start these things, you're supposed to dig out all the clinker, which is when it all starts turning white and glassy and sort of crunchy and there's no fuel left to it. It's just impurities, right? That's phosphorus and sulfur and whatever. So you gotta basically chuck these. So Can you put that in the garden? Probably it's, could. Well, it's good for nothing. Like, okay. um, but the halfway stuff is coke, and that's still good. And there's some green coal kind of mixed in here, so this isn't the best. So what I'm gonna do is just take a bunch of this out of here. All around the edges, you can see it made coke and turning into clinker. Meh. So let's just move all this out of here. And if we see a bunch of that crap, take it out. And I gotta do this because it, so there's the holes where the air comes in. You could call it a tree air, but that's maybe a little bit fancy. It's just a, a black iron pipe coming in the bottom with a cap that uh, I stripped the galvy off and drilled some holes in it. So the air comes straight out and um, the sides, this is a brake drum. And I put um, some, uh, long story short, some refractory stuff in there and sort of sealed it up with refractory cement. Um, but there's a, quite a bit of ash, which plugs it up a little bit sometimes. Um, and when it's this fine, the um, it gets a bit plugged up and 
it doesn't want to burn very well. So I'm just going to take out some of this finer ash and it should probably go away. But it actually does protect the sides of the forge and the bottom from burning out. Okay, and then what we want to do is put something in to start the fire. So these are just holes drilled in a, a cap for whatever that is, a two and a half inch or three inch, uh, two and a half inch I think it is, black iron pipe. But I welded that on so now it, or at least it's got ears in there so it doesn't wiggle around too much. But underneath, this is just a T and the air basically used a hairdryer before um, and blows in here and you can empty the ash out from the bottom. Uh, and otherwise, basically, it's just air that comes in and, and stokes the fire. That's clinker. It's got chunks of <laughs> steel that I burned. <laughs> and it's probably phosphorus and sulfur and whatever else is left in from the coal. And um, so you got to take that out of there because it doesn't burn. It just takes up space in the fire and, and it's frustrating when it starts to build up in there. Um, but we, what we want is to take all the leftover coke from the last fire because it, it lights easier and starts burning better. Um, it needs air blowing against it to run, like to, to make a fire. But if you put green coal like this in there, it'll smoke and it'll really have a hard time burning. Um, and you can just tell by feeling it, um, like there's nowhere for the air to get in, inside it and that kind of stuff. So it just burns like bitumen. Last time I tried to start a fire in the shop, I had a really hard time getting things going. And I, I think maybe the uh, coke was further cooked than I thought it was and didn't really have much left. Sometimes it's a little tricky, actually. Um, so, good bits go in. There's a little bit of green coal, that's probably fine, but really what you want is a fire underneath a good pile of coke. Which is hilarious. I don't do a lot of this with coal, but um, it makes me laugh because I'm like a climate change guy. And people make fun of me for using coal to make my fires. Oh, well, we need to plug this in too. We do that in the meantime. Uh, get the, uh, the green coal in a big pile beside the fire and just start moving it forward, moving it forward. Here. And I like a little poker to move around and stuff. Hello? Yep. Actually, now that... I should have taken all the ash out of here. Ash, all the jokes. <laughs> That's mostly ash, yeah. So this was a chunk of steel that was like in a driveway or something. And it, I just bent up the sides so it contains everything. I cut out a hole in the middle to put that brake drum in. And it's easy. And it's on a 2x4 frame and it doesn't even burn. So, I like to work with charcoal, but the charcoal sparks a bit more. Like at this point, it would be good. And the sparks come out, and that's fine, but it just depends on your environment. But it burns way cleaner than this in terms of like sulfur and stuff being in it. And when you're working really hot steel, that sulfur can actually get into the steel. Um, which is why it's per preferable kind of to use the charcoal for for the clean, like high quality, high carbon. But there's nothing like coal for getting a enough heat for a forge well. 
Look at that. You hear it taking off. See the yellow? That's coming out of the coal. And that means, must mean some green coal. This is an awkward mix of crap here on the top. So this coal comes from the uh, the Combe Historical Society or something. There's like a tourist office and around the corner they have a blacksmith shop. And I found on the internet they sell this stuff. It's, it's not very uh, easy to find for sale in Alberta. Um, and so it comes in different, this is about a good sized chunk. There's a lot of like that stuff in there, which isn't awesome, but if you scrape it around the fire, it uh, congeals together and makes like a solid chunk. And then if you lift it up underneath, the air gets around it just right and it gets really hot. So that's smoking. That's working we're good. This fire is hotter than it needs to be. <laughs> By a long shot. But I can't slow down the air anymore. I'm going to hold it over here. What if I should use those other tongs? I don't want it to pop up. So you hit it while it's on the edge, and you can, and we'll keep moving it back and forth a little bit. You just keep hitting it, hitting it, and once it starts to curl over a bit too much, before it gets totally black, we'll put it down, and you can just tap it like this to, to flatten it out again. Not too hard, just this slightly. Yeah. Ready? What's this side? There you go. Good. Hard. Hard. Go for it. <laughs> you got it. Keep going. You get a little closer. You get a good hit. Yeah. Alright, are ready? We're gonna flatten it out. Just give it a tap there to flatten that part. Nice. Very good. Let me do a heat. Let me get another heat. That was good. Are we gonna shorten it and then add the longness to the handle? It'll naturally like as we narrow. So that's this is a great thing. Having strikers is awesome. And when when there's three of us, we can actually three one two three one two three. And it's not using as much muscle. Well, everybody can still hit hard, but now the person who's the blacksmith is the one who's holding the material and, and is directing traffic. You guys are the muscles. So what happens is, if I say there, you watch where I'm hitting at the same spot, right? And then I'll flip it, look for my signals. If you see me getting ready to turn it, I'll try to give you a little bit of warning. But you can't hear my voice, so you just have to get used to the rhythm, right? Yeah. <laughs> Usually they go, yep, and then bang, 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 and they go, yep, and just, or, Yep, They'll hit yep, once yep. to get started, go, and then when I do two hits, two more. Hit the highest points? So, hit where I hit. Throw it. Gabe. Okay, so same thing. Here we go. What is it? Not too hard? Yep. Okay, let's do another heat. Do you want the hole to be near the bell or in the handle? 
I think right on the end of the handle. Yeah. Okay, so then later we'll, we'll bend this. Okay. But right now we'll just keep thinning and thinning. Okay. Just from there. On the end there. The yeah. End the end. We'll just keep. I think this is never any more than about two inches. Yeah. And eventually we will need to thin it some, but. Yeah. Keep it thick.
Check that piece of steel and then decide if we're going to. So I'm just going to switch tongs here first. Sorry. Check. We took a little piece that we cut off, the stuff that was burnt. And I got really hot here, so it's above its magnetic temperature, non magnetic temperature. I'm going to take it out and plunge it in the cold water to harden it. I'm just going to see what it's like. Okay, so we took that little piece and tried to harden it. And so I just wanted to see with a file whether it's going to skate. That feels pretty hard to me. That file is not really cutting. Yeah, that's hard. So then the next thing, safety squints is going to be to bust this and we'll just see what the grain looks like and see how brittle it is. Yep. So that, that was brittle, right? It didn't bend much before it broke. That's actually fairly fine grain structure except maybe in the middle. It looks a little, anyway. It'll do fine for our purposes. I guess what we should do is maybe a bit of like a quick grain refinement uh, heat or two. So you bring it up to sort of red and then you let it cool down gently. And that just normalizes it, lets all the stresses come out of the metal. And it encourages smaller grains so it's less likely to fracture along the grains later. So you're supposed to do three cycles of that and then heat treat. Managed to keep some of the serial numbers. <laughs> so what we'll do maybe, if we heat treat it in that, it doesn't break in half in our faces. <laughs> we should take uh, the propane torch afterwards and we'll just heat it from the spine and watch the colors move down towards the cutting edge mm -hmm. and that'll temper back from brittle. It's a bit, a bit ghetto, but it works. It's hard to fit a whole blade this length in a small space. Yeah. That's why the Japanese ones are shaped like that. The side blow. I wouldn't mind making one like that. I also like the idea of the push pull thing with Willie Air. But
bend it either. Pretty good. So I think that's about as good as we're going to get for thermal cycling and stuff. I'm not an expert, but it's worth a try. So the next one, I've got to heat it evenly and I've got to get the water over here so we can... any clinking. And it looks like it hardened here. Maybe not quite there, but maybe you won't need it to be there. <sighs> okay, well, let's give it a try. I'll, I'll, uh, I could even hold it over the fire and try to do it that way. Okay, so I'm trying to heat it up from the spine kind of gently to temper it. And uh, I didn't really sand it off so we can see the colors. Maybe I should have done that a bit better. The point here is to try to, now we've hardened it, we've actually changed it from martensite and austenite into martensite or something, is what the hard steel is. And, but what you want to do is actually bring it back part, part way so that it's tough and not totally brittle. So it's hard enough to hold an edge, but not so brittle that it's going to break when you hit something. So after you've heat treated and everything looks kind of good, so we're going to end up sharpening a heat treated thing. That's going to be an interesting job. Maybe we should have done that first. <laughs> You don't want to heat treat a really thin edge because it can crack easier. Well, to me like it's hot like it hardened mostly there and one more to machete so that that hole is part of the handle we cut it off around here and that was shaped it's not bad Ooh, maybe I have a bit of a wobble to it now Spine's pretty good. Hmm. What could we do about that? It probably doesn't matter. It's just a bush. Probably yeah. doesn't really matter for what it is. I think this is going to be great. We can test the uh, hardness of it a bit with that file again and just see what kind of noise it makes. Turn that thing off. Woo! hard. So there it's making a different sound. See that's sort of biting a bit. That's pretty hard steel to start with, but this is clearly skating. 
So I'd call that a moderate success. Yeah. We can uh, clean it up if we want to with the angle grinder, or we can just leave it like that. Um, we need to, hopefully we can still drill holes through it. That'll be the challenge. That happens sometimes. And if you can't, you can try things like torching it from this side and maybe holding it with a wet towel or something like that if you try to protect it. But we've got a hard thing, and in all likelihood... Camera. I see. I think it's gonna work. Okay. All right, thanks for uh, showing me that, Adam. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. You've got a YouTube channel too, and you do some of this stuff from time to time. It's pretty random, but it's, uh, yeah, I do a little bit of forging on it and some other stuff. Leather work? Yeah. And woodworking? Yeah. And perfumes? Some scents, yeah. So where can they find out about that? <laughs> That's, it's called Bohemian Garage. So it's all the best things. Okay. So. Awesome. Is that yeah. what Bohemian means? Yeah, you know, that lifestyle of all the good stuff and whatever from, I think of like Paris and the whenever. But I like making stuff and I like to sort of pick the best of what I find in the world and play with it. Awesome. So I'll put a link to Adam's uh, channel down below if you want to check out some of his other videos. And um, yeah, go subscribe. It's definitely uh, worth checking out. So thanks, Adam. Cheers.